feel like a lot of buyers are just pulling the brakes. They're like, you know what? No, this is the buyer's market that said, you know, That's I'm going right. to start lowballing a lot of properties and let's wait and see maybe the prices are dropping. Exactly. I think, I mean, there's one thing to lowball properties, but there's another thing to say, okay, I'm a buyer in today's market. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Reality Check where we discuss what's happening in Toronto's real estate market, where it's going and help you make informed decision buying and selling real estate. So we've got Jeff Slidem here today. Good to be here, Nima. Thanks, Thanks for having me as always. Thanks for coming. And what we're going to talk about today is the stats for the month of May. And we Bring just had the uh, interest rate drop. Yes, that was the hot topic right yeah. off the hop, right? So they dropped the rates, the TREB numbers come out. They dropped a quarter of a point, and of course, the the hot the hot topic is how is that going to affect things going forward? Now, the uh, they're claiming that rates will continue to drop. How this first drop, obviously, only being a quarter of a point, is going to affect the overall market. I think it's going to be in slow and steady, and so that effect will also result in a slow and steady adjustment. To our exactly. So that's actually a good point because um, I mean we're representing a lot of sellers right now, and the general thought process was as soon as the rates drop, that's it, we're in clear and we're gonna be like, you know, seeing multiple offers come back or a you know, flood of people coming through. Well, clearly as that happened, I mean, we didn't see noticeable change in the number of uh, showings. You didn't and, have buyers lined up at your listings uh, yesterday? Uh, I wish I had, I wish I had, <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's just, I think just quarter of a point is not that much to really like do anything to the affordability, but it's, I think it's more of a like buyer mentality. Okay, now maybe things will sell faster. So maybe I should get a move on. But I think till people see actually a house they were looking at sold more than what they expected and they see another one going for that, they're not going to get a move on. That's going to be like, I think 30 to 90 day process. That's, that's a, that's really cool to see that. Really brilliant you to, to comment on that. That's right. Until you actually see some transactions happen and to really establish that value, you're really not going to see a huge influx of buyers in the marketplace. Where I think where this rate adjustment will help, it'll help the buyers that were already in the marketplace that were looking, they're going to say, hey, I like this house. I didn't, I can't quite afford it, but that rate adjustment might just be enough to tick up their purchase price, their ability to afford that purchase price a little bit more. And maybe somewhere that seller will, you know, meet that buyer somewhere in the middle yeah. to get to get that deal across the finish line. And I think Another point of it is with the first rate drop, maybe people are more inclined to think there is going to be the second one coming soon. So you know what, before things start to move, you know, in terms of pricing going exactly. up higher, let's, you know, if we see something we like, let's go with that. So, I mean, let's go to the numbers because yeah. again, we just look at the numbers in this. Uh, um, this is last month, right? Yeah. This is before any kind of rate adjustment. This is exactly. just for the month of May. I think this is like pretty much in anticipation of the uh, rate drop. It's a great point. Because uh, technically, like, let's just start with the number of sales. Number of sales didn't really change much. We had uh, just over 7,100 last uh, month. Month, we're down slightly, yeah, down yeah. to 7,000. 7,000, yeah. No, I don't think, and this is it. I think it is a slight pause on the market right now, and especially with... They claim that rates, the Bank of Canada claiming we are going to slowly lower rates, which says there most likely will be another adjustment this year. And anybody who's sitting on the sideline or any buyer who has the ability to wait, they may wait. But as you've mentioned, you wait too long, you will miss the mark. Every, the time the bottom is impossible. And so as long as you have that one toe in the water, you're always out there, you're always engaged in the marketplace, you're gonna find that property and be like, hey, that's the one. Yeah. And you get that seller who says, you know what, I need to move. And you find that that common ground to yeah. get that deal done. I mean, like again, talking about the bottom of the market, I mean, so far the bottom of the market this year has been January. And again, January, December usually are the slow months, but it's it was pretty funny how from January to February things went up pretty quickly. I mean, like we had about 1,026,000 average price in January, then we go up to just over 1.1. And if I recall correctly again, because we had a few listings and I saw the market kind of jump in February because of the lack of inventory. And we can even see that here, like, you know, we had less than two months of inventory. We saw multiple offers come back. Yeah. And um, I personally thought as we progress, March, April, things would get crazier, but things did not. And well, the listings, the number of, the amount of product coming to market yeah. outpaced exactly. the demand. Right? And that leads us to our next section, because right now we're over 21,000 listings and yes. that has gone up 
drastically. It's a big jump. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like we've been. You've this, seen it's more than doubled now, right? Since January. Exactly. So we've gone up, say, 100% in. In, uh, in a few months, four months. In, that's right. Yeah. In inventory. Yeah. We're like over three months of inventory, kind of a balanced market there. And um, yeah, three, when you look at it, that's an interesting number to look at, right? When, and I don't think it gets addressed enough. When you look at inventory numbers, I heard a really smart economist say a long time ago, a balanced market isn't around that four to six months of inventory. I'd have to argue with them now, now that we've been through these cycles that we've been through, we've been through such a hot market. We're seeing that balance now, probably more three to four, maybe touching on five months of inventory to be that balanced market. So I've actually been looking at that. I was looking at that like a couple of years ago and I read into it and there's a lot of places in the US that they actually say four to six months is a balanced market. But I think it goes back to the whole concept of mindset because a lot of people here in Toronto, if they see a house, doesn't get 20 offers, for them it's like, okay, you know what? It's not a hot yeah. market right now. Yeah. Whereas this right now, in my opinion, still like is balanced because majority of the homes are not going into multiple offers. And if they go, we see one or two uh, yeah. offers, unless you drastically uh, underprice it and things are not selling for crazy prices. Yes. And I think from region to region, if this could differ, because what I noticed was once in GTA, we hit over four months, I feel like a lot of buyers are just pulling the brakes. They're like, you know what? No, this is the buyer's market that said, you know, let's I'm going to start lowballing a lot of properties and let's wait and see maybe the prices are dropping. Exactly. I think, I mean, there's one thing to lowball properties, but there's another thing to say, okay, I'm a buyer in today's market. I'm going to look for opportunities. Yeah. Right. And I think if you're, if your mindset, you're looking for a screaming deal, the numbers are saying there's no screaming deals out there. You may have an opportunity where you may get ahead a little bit. Yeah. Like where I think the deals are, and we can talk about this as well. There's opportunities in the condominium market, without a doubt, and we can we can yeah. touch on that. But if you're looking for detached townhomes, semis, there are opportunities out there. There are sellers that you know priced really for maybe last year or the top of the market prices, and so those are sellers who are arguably on the market. Those are the opportunities you got to look for. Right. Yeah. Those are the ones you got to bid on to say, okay, this is the right thing. And if they're not willing to sell, you move on to the next one. Yeah. One strategy we use right now for, with a lot of our clients is exactly that. So we look at properties that are sitting on the market, let's say over 30 or sometimes 40 days. And uh, we look at a few of them. And I always tell my clients, I'm like, listen, you know what? Don't get emotionally attached. If you like something, put an offer at the price you would love to have this property. If it doesn't work out, let's move on to the we next gotta, one. Let's move one. on to the next Brilliant. one. And usually what happens is like, you know, when we're on the third one, one of the last ones <laughs> call back because it's been about two weeks now. And yeah. they're like, hey, listen, you know, what's going interested? on? Let's go um, back to the table and negotiate it. And so many times we've gotten such good deals. And we did that with condos as well. Like yeah. you know, we were at a um, property um, and I think it was listed for six ninety nine. Anyways, we went in at like, uh, I think six fifty. Went to 655 and then uh, we went up to like, I think 668 and that's where we were supposed to like, you know, make the deal happen. They said no. And then we walked away. They came back to us, I think almost two and a half weeks later than that. We actually went back to 655 and got it. So fabulous. Yeah. So, I mean, that's um, I think, again, going back to where the opportunities are. These are the opportunity if someone's in the market. And it's for patience. Yeah. It's patience. And I think over the last 10 years, We've been used to such a rampant market and yeah. things just happening so quickly. And it's kind of that right now mentality. But if you have that patience, that's where the opportunity lies. And as you're saying, okay, let's go to this one. And then we go, well, that doesn't work. We'll go to the next one. All of a sudden, maybe you go back to the first one you saw and see if there's any interest yeah. there. And then maybe the sellers or the seller's agents calling you saying, hey, come on back. Exactly. Right? Well, yeah, I'll brilliant. give you a good example. Like we have right now, one of our clients, uh, one of our team members is helping them. Uh, the gentleman is from Vancouver. They're buying here for their son uh, and they're looking at a condo. And originally we talked to them about like two months ago and uh, they're like, you know what? Maybe I'll come there and then I'll look at things. He's busy. He's not coming. So we called them back two weeks ago. We we're like, listen, condo market isn't the way it is. Why don't we send you the ones we think you would like? We go video it, send you the video. And if you like it, maybe we'll put an offer with a condition in it. We actually yesterday put an offer conditional on the guy coming from Vancouver for seven business stage, taking a look at the place and then firming up after seeing it. Fabulous. And they accept it. And that's Brilliant. the interesting thing that I don't think we would have seen this, you know, no. two years ago, like no, even like not. last year, 
a lot of sellers wouldn't Even go down consider that, that. Yeah, consider that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So there you go. Oh, that's great. Yeah. New opportunities, right? Yeah. Things are being done a little differently now. And especially mm-hmm. as you said, like with the condo market, because of the uh, crazy number of um, inventory that's coming to the market, yes. especially what I saw was after the capital uh, gain tax announcement, yes, a flood of listings came on the market, yes. especially downtown, even uptown in around one. I'll give you an example. We have a listing uh, near Transit City. Originally, when we were talking with the sellers, there was only 17 two bedrooms, just north of Highway 7 in the five buildings. Yes. And then by the time we went on the market, uh, after the, um, it was uh, end of April, beginning of May, there was 27. As of now, the whole area has got 71 two bedrooms on the market. It's insane. So that happened in a matter of what's like? Like 40, 45 days. Yeah. 45 days. Wow. And since beginning of April, there was only seven sold. That's it. That's like 10 months of inventory. 10 months in that one pocket. In that one pocket. And I've looked at the prices, how they like, the ones that sold, sold were crazy low prices. Like, We've had two bedroom that people sold have for to, 580. Yeah. And they were hovering previously for 690. Yeah. People have to sell for different reasons, yeah. right? So they're looking to make changes uh, for whatever. And they're looking to cash out or pull some cash off the table. Yeah. Like, and some people did, you know, locked in at those variable rates yeah. when the rates shot up. And yeah. obviously they can't, it's not carrying anymore. They're out of pocket. They're like, you know what? We're out. Whatever we get. We'll get so that's exactly, on. you know, going back to talking about the opportunity, I think that's where it is because you don't know what the seller's situation is no. until you put the uh, offer in front of them. And even as an agent, I don't think you can really gauge what your client's mindset would be till an offer actually comes. Exactly. So when looking at these uh, condos, we see a lot of condos holding their prices pretty firm yes. at what it was, let's say, a few months ago. But the ones that are, you know, in a... What is interesting too, you look at the average condos across the GTA, prices are only down about two and a half percent right yeah. now. So even with you know inventory up as much as it is, you're not seeing a drastic no. fall off the cliff. No. Like, oh, prices like where condos are in big trouble. It's not the case. You know, prices are maintaining their value. Yeah. And, and a big part of that is obviously this rate adjustment will help. I think it'll close the gap. And it's that first time home buyer market where people still want to engage in real estate, they yep. want to own real estate. It's an asset you can touch and feel. The returns are there. People understand the long-term benefits of owning real estate. And now opportunities are presenting themselves. I think you'll see prices still continually adjust, but you're not gonna see them. Well, I mean, like the know. interesting thing is right now, like uh, month over month, April to May, despite the fact that the inventory has gone up, month of inventory has gone up, we had about what, $10,000 average price increase. Like That's prices right. haven't gone down. Like we we're sitting at 1 million, 165 1 million 166 last yeah. month was 1 million 156 yeah you're right yeah. there right so prices i mean there you go prices are still appreciating month over month which yeah. is great to see it just shows you the interest now in in real estate and can you demand that's just demand is continuing we are in the spring market of course so that demand is stronger than most yeah so i'm thinking you're what you're finding is that where where we're seeing the adjustment is that condo the, the where the big volume uh, of inventory is coming is on the condo side. Yeah. And again, like, you know, I'm just looking at average prices here. Um, yeah. So overall GTA um, average price went up by 1%. Yeah. And all the regions, Toronto, York, uh, Mississauga, Durham, Oakville, average prices all went up anywhere from 2 to 4%. So we didn't really have anything that dropped down. I mean, like we have certain segments that came down, but overall month over month prices went up. I think if you got to look at, you got to really dive into the micro markets where yeah. you look into those areas like, like you're saying, Transit City up in Vaughan, those that massive condo community yeah. around that final TTC stop. You got the Go Train down the road. You got the TTC there. It's high demand. That will bounce back. It's just there's just such an influx of inventory all at once. Yeah. There, naturally, there's going to be some adjustments to that marketplace. And that reminds me of what happened with Oakville. Like when 2022, um, February, you know, the peak of the market, Oakville was like crazy. I think mm-hmm. the average price was well over two and a half million at that point. Oh, big, big, big number. Yeah. yeah. And it fell down to as low as almost, I think, one five. It's one five right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's in around. Uh, I even, right. I think, even went further down. Yeah. Um, and I actually have it here. But the f- interesting thing was the, um, 
detached market that went down drastically in 2023 came back up and the later half of 2022 there were crazy deals in the oil field and we were talking about it in the same yeah um podcast and we were saying like how the month of inventory was hitting five months and yeah. there were deals out there to be had and uh, no one was really looking at it in my opinion because oakville is a great place to be yeah and homes that were going for 2.3 they were selling it for 1.7 1.8 yeah. it was nuts and now things came back up again it's interesting when you're in it every day like we are you see those opportunities yeah. and i remember like another market like brampton yeah like I remember years ago, 10 years ago, looking at like, gosh, these values seem way undervalued. Yeah. Like something's not right. And all of a sudden it just shot, shot value shot yeah. right too fast. Yeah. Right. And now, unfortunately, when things shoot up too quickly, they tend to overcorrect. And yeah. I think that's what Brampton's feeling right now. And it will, again, it'll flush itself out yeah. and the values will come back. But again, it just overheated. It's got to get somehow get back to that average appreciation that we like to see annually it's about six to seven percent yeah. right so when it's well, i think the values went up 20 or 30 30 percent 30 percent appreciation yeah. in one year that's not sustainable it's not sustainable that yeah. was and so when you see that kind of appreciation that's where it peaked and unfortunately the wheels came off and yeah. uh and again you're gonna f see that over correction yeah and, and we tend to see that with brampton i think um lot, like richmond hill our new market bradford for example these yeah. places they have like even barry for example when it goes up it goes up crazy yes and but on the but then there lies the opportunity yeah. right when you see something like like 10 years ago i'm thinking geez you know we should be buying in brampton yeah why aren't like and all of a sudden there you go but again yeah. trying to time the market yeah exactly nobody can do that yeah. but like but there you see those opportunities and you mentioned oakville yeah one of those opportunities you see prices dip down you're like this is good value yeah. that's where you got to find and even right now for example talking about the condo market right now the assignment market downtown toronto is in my opinion where the opportunity is because yes you're buying brand new condos either at the same price as the resale or a lot of cases below what they're selling that's correct we're seeing a lot of uh, assignments in nobu that are selling well below condos across the street from them that yes. are like you know five to eight years old and you know and it's noble i mean like it should be like at oh, least 15 percent yeah, yeah. higher 20 percent higher than yeah. what the, the uh, average condo is there and that's what we're seeing assignment deals like nobu but there are other products other buildings that aren't having the benefits yeah. of nobu on the assignment market yeah. where there are people like geez i just need to get out yeah and there's opportunity again that's where that's where you can find some yeah. deals so yeah assignments yeah. i think assignments is where um again it's having that uh what you call it mental fortitude to say geez i know on the other side of this in three to five years time this yeah. is a good buy yeah right now so just to wrap things up yeah overall so right now the we uh the interest rate came down by 0.25 yes. what do you think the rest of the summer june july august what's going to happen there because they're july and august are inherently like slow months to begin with yes so what do you think will happen in terms of sales? i think you're going to see a prolonged spring market i think you see some consistency the similar consistent the similar pace that we've seen right now carry on the summer months with okay. that i think with the rate adjustment you're going to have buyers say hey you know what or buyers that were sitting on the sidelines you know what it's time for me to take that step forward and start understanding the marketplace i better get out and look at yeah. some product so you're going to see that uptick i think in showings yeah I'm optimistic about that. You're going to see an uptick of buyers and tra transaction activity that you may have not have seen before. And then we're going to wait and see what happens in July. If there's another rate cut that quickly come July, I think that's when you're going to really turn that dial up. You're going to see even more buyers come What back do you think? Do you think uh, we're going to have that rate cut in July? Oh, <laughs> it's really going to depend. It's, it's again, the Bank of Canada, they see, they see uh, things that we don't. Yeah. Uh, they're going to monitor this this current, this this recent rate adjustment yeah. very closely. If they're not seeing the activity they want to see, sure, why not? Yeah. They'll look at the... Uh, the, the I mean, they're not looking at housing market overall. They're yeah. looking at a lot of uh, factors. So oh, yeah, they'll look at the inf exactly. they'll look inflation, at the inflation numbers. Yeah, exactly. Employment rates. Employment still is very strong in Canada. Yeah. We're not seeing a, a mass, uh, you know... Uh, layoffs layoffs or things yeah. like that exactly so i think there's some opportunities that when you're not and again the job market is really what supports well all purchases yeah. really but yeah. a big part of it is the is the real estate market so assuming the rate drops what's going to happen in september what would you think oh, it'll be a busy fall, fall. It it'll be do. a busy fall i think again you're going to see this consistency i don't think you're going to see the pace at which things sold before yeah but you're going to see a consistency in the marketplace which is great which is healthy which is yeah. what we need you're not going to see people lining up for 
you know, 20 bids and uh, price is shooting up 30%, but you're yeah. going to see that price point kind of average itself out. You'll see, get back to, God forbid, a normal market. Yeah. So as the broker of a, one of the busiest office yeah. in Tron GTA, I would say, what advice would you have for sellers going to list this summer? Great question. I would say now, I'd say now is a great time. If, if you're in the motive, whatever your motivation may be, it obviously depends on your motivation. I think now is a great time. You want to get ahead of it. I think obviously we never know where prices are going to go. We don't see prices. Well, I'm going to wait out. Maybe there's another price chop and prices are going to shoot up another, you know, five, 10%. We're not going to see that. So if there, there is, uh, right now we're seeing consistent on the year. If you look at the prices on the year right now, yeah. prices are down there. You see it right there, down 1%. Uh, on the year. So obviously you want to get ahead of that. So if prices continue to depreciate, if you wait much longer, prices could come off a little bit more. We yeah. don't know, right? So, but again, we're not going to see, I don't think we're going to, we're not going to see a huge, uh, we're not going to see a huge double fall digit, off yeah. the cliff, double digit depreciation. We're yeah. not going to see a massive uh, increase as well. Increase as well. So if whatever your, your motivation is to sell, take that in consideration, whether you're yeah. upsizing, downsizing, moving out of town, wherever you're choosing to, choosing to go now is a great opportunity. And I think that's uh, the best answer to give because um, what the motivation is and what you're looking to buy, because especially like, you know, in a down market, if you're upsizing, it's a good time to be buying. But, sure. um, you know, if you're waiting and buying, let's say in the same market, if the prices are down for your property, probably the other one that you're getting is going to yeah, be there's a better be, price. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty much it. Anything right. else? I think, you know what, there's everybody's motivated by different things when it comes to buying, selling, whatever it may be. And they're always saying, I'm all, everyone's always trying to time it. Whatever your motivation to be, whatever you're motivated to do, take that in consideration. If yeah. you can wait a little longer, wait a little longer. But hey, you know what? I want to move on with my life. I got things I got to do. Yeah. I want to be somewhere, wherever yeah. I want to be. You and know what? Now is a great time. Real well, estate's a great thing. Jeff, thanks for coming. My pleasure, Neva. Thanks for having me. Guys, make sure to watch our last episode of uh, NK Real Talk with Chris Slidon. We talked about the market again. It was uh, very insightful. So if you are in the market right now, buying or selling or looking at investment properties, be sure to check that out. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.